morning everybody. I am out in the chicken run this morning and I thought I would give you a little update for the month of June or for this week and just uh, give you an idea of what we're growing here on the homestead because it is popping. The garden, the even stuff we didn't plant is popping. So we're going to start with... I know this looks like a big huge mess but in my chicken run I'm trying to grow some stuff to help feed the chickens over the summer so this is a huge tomato plant that is it has lots of blossoms on it so it should be starting to produce here soon of course we got some weeds down here because I haven't quite figured out how to get underneath of there to weed it I did try to plant some herbs in there they didn't really take off outside the fence we discovered we have their wild black raspberries I believe so what I've started doing is intertwining them in the fence so that the chickens can pick at them and eventually eat the berries. Although little man and I have been picking most of the berries because <laughs> they're really good and they're tart. The chicken composting area is hopping and I'm able to get finished compost pretty much out of here to top dress if I if I pot up a plant or hey, if, mommy, I, if mommy, I it's an airplane. It's an airplane. I use this uh, usually to top dress because any kind of amendments you want to put on top of the soil. But if you look, I've got either a squash or a cucumber volunteering over here. I move these crates periodically because stuff grows underneath of them and it gives the chickens some nice greenery. I have actually planted stuff. I'm actually thinking about planting some grass seed because they have killed the grass in here. Under here, I planted some mint and I'm waiting for that to kind of take off. Outside the fence, I have a spaghetti squash that I started some random squash I don't even know that was this was an old compost pile so there's a lot of stuff coming up here there's tomatoes looks like either pumpkins or cucumbers that stuff's all volunteer with the exception of this this is comfrey that I planted and then there's a little bit more down here uh, comfrey is something that I, I invested a lot in this past year to help with feeding our animals because you can actually dry it down to feed the animals all of the animals will eat it. Our bunnies, our chickens, our turkeys, they all eat it. And uh, it's really, really nutrient dense because it's a um, dynamic accumulator. So it sends on a really long tap root and it brings all of those nutrients and stuff to the surface in those leaves. And then when they eat it, they obviously get the nutrients. So another part of the chicken run is another tomato plant that they've been nipping at already. And I've got a bunch of oregano planted around the base down here. Oregano has some natural antibiotic properties, so that's something I try to always have for them. I have um, given some of it to the bunnies. They're not as fond of it. They actually prefer sage. They're a little snobby with their herbs. So out here, this is an area that is currently recovering from having bunnies and chickens run on it, but all these pots are... These, <laughs> they are all um, cherry tomato plants that volunteered out in the front uh, garden. And I've slowly been transplanting them into pots because I know how prolific they are. They'll be great for the chickens. The bunnies will eat a few of them. And I'll dehydrate some and I'll add some to sauce. We're letting this grass recover a little bit because um, we did run animals. Um, we generally will run bunnies and then chickens and it, and it does tear up the grass But this area was all mossy so we wanted it torn up so that we could come back with grass seed and clover and add some stuff And if you look Here I've pulled a lot and fed them to the bunnies But there's volunteer sunflower seeds from where we give all of our animals black oil sunflower seeds There's, there's little sunflowers coming up everywhere. The bunnies love the sunflower seeds and the chickens do too, but the neat thing is, is they eat them and obviously they poop them out and they're like, they start to grow almost immediately. And I'll show you in a minute, we have a whole grove over by my, um, my other, my one garden. Cause I got, I've tried to make the best use of space out here. It's, there's a lot of property, but I don't want everything all in one place because back here we have the animals. So back here I want stuff that I can pick fresh and throw to the animals you know to give them something fun to snack on out front is more stuff that i'm preserving um, back here i do have herbs some of them are medicinal 
um, and you know extra nutrients for the animals but some are just it's just where I had space so I quick wanted to show you here obviously because of New Jersey's ridiculous restrictions even though we have almost two and a half acres we can't have any larger ruminant animals we can't have goats we can't have sheep we can't have a pig or two so we have a lot of area that looks like this and it's very hard to keep it back and it's very close to the house so like very close to the house so you we don't want that we don't want that like there's poison ivy in here there's poison oak poison sumac pretty much anything you can guess there's i mean there's there's good stuff there's mimosa which the bunnies love you know there's berries there is poke which the bunnies don't like which is kind of a nuisance but it's really easy to get rid of so what we did and if you follow our mortal love facebook page you probably will see a picture of this this week um, but we, <laughs> mind you, this is start. This is what it looks like to start. There's pine trees. There's a whole row of very nice pine trees. That's our property line. You know, they're, they're beautiful. They're covered in ivy though, which is becoming a problem because we're starting to lose them. We've lost several that have, have just come off in storms because they're just being surrounded at the bottom. So we decided to run our chicken tractor with our meat birds and our bunnies side by side down the property line to try and clean it up. Well, let me tell you, Stink and I just came out here and seeded this with grass last night. But look at the difference, look at the difference. You go from this to this, it's pretty incredible. They do in a very short period of time because we move them every day because we don't want them sitting in their own manure. That's just, it really, really like gets rid of your parasite load when you don't have them in their own manure. We do not run the chickens and then the bunnies. The bunnies always go first, but in this case, like we're kind of doing a side by side. Um, but what we'll probably do is have the, the chickens come back up the property line because they'll go through all that rabbit manure and, you know, make it even better compost and make the soil even better and nicer for everything out here. And by having grass and clover, we'll have more space to run bunnies now we did this a little different than we normally run our rabbits because we wanted to destroy the foliage that was here there was a lot of bad stuff and there still is we kind of missed a spot here that we'll have to come back and get but they have done a fantastic job and it's really i'm excited to see what this is going to look like when the grass takes over this is my redneck um herb garden so in here we have a ton of sage that overwintered from last year. It smells incredible. The bunnies love it. I did start some from seed this year because I wanted to keep that going. There's some chives, uh, marigolds just to kind of help, you know, keep bugs out of the space. I did plant some parsley, but I don't think it came up in here. This is, this space is not, not quite a year old. So who knows what it's going to do. Here is sedum, which I planted for the pollinators because they absolutely go nuts for it. There's some on the outside too. This is milkweed. It's just common milkweed that actually, as far as I know, it's naturally occurring around here, but I uh, kind of encouraged it. And now it's everywhere. Um, tucked in here is some lavender. Now, I know there's a lot of uses for lavender. I like to pluck it and put it in a chicken coop just to kind of keep the smells down and spoil my girls a little bit. This is coneflower. I think that was purple coneflower that I moved back here. There's some more of it down here. That'll be popping soon. Inside this herb garden, I tucked a little compost area, which I haven't been real diligent about, if I'm being completely honest. Um, usually what I do is I put yard waste in there if I'm pulling weeds, and that just breaks down and it, it feeds the little area. It needs to be turned on occasion. And I, again, I have been a little lackadaisical because I've been dealing with not feeling 100%. If you look, just from putting garden scraps and stuff in there, that's creating soil. Like, I haven't put dirt in here. This is all just from garden scraps and grass and leaves all breaking down in here. I do throw a little bunny poop in here from time to time if I have an overabundance on the ground. But yeah, that's a great way to feed your little beds if you have the space to do that. Out here we have volunteer impatience. More sedum, more milkweed. Over here, actually, last year I planted three impatient seed, three impatient plants that I grew from seed. And there are I've run the bunnies through here to, to help with weed control around the edges, but they have gone absolutely nuts. We have some lilies in here, uh, daylilies. 
common tiger lilies. They're just going crazy. The daffodils, I just chop and drop them. They break down. They help with weed control. As they break down, they feed. They feed the soil, which is pretty cool. I'm a terrible photographer, honestly. <laughs> but this is actually one of my favorite spaces, and it's my favorite because literally I've put almost zero effort into this, and it's producing so much, or it will produce so much. It's it's very close. So this is last year. This was a bean TP. I didn't get any beans out here this year, although I might still. These are all sunflowers that just reseeded from last year. They're all down here. I've pulled some. There's a um, either squash or a cucumber plant that volunteered in my compost pile. My compost pile that I neglected is here. I literally just kind of let it go over the winter. And obviously it didn't heat up enough. And there's tomatoes in there. There's squash. There's cucumbers. I can't wait to see what free food we get out of that. It's going to be incredible. There's... I think that was a Paul Robeson that I planted there last year and I planted it too late in the season so it didn't really do anything but it came back. This is comfrey and again I've strategically started placing that around the property here and I will do the same in Kentucky to act as animal feed so that we can also start drying that for winter. Last year this had beans all down it and this year it's tomatoes. Down in the middle there last year I had potatoes and they reseeded. I must have missed digging some of them. There's a ton of potatoes in there that are just about ready to dig. These uh, two rows of tomato plants, every single one of them, I didn't plant any of them. They were plants that reseeded out front. They're cherry tomato plants. It's uh, Seeds of Change cherry tomato plants. It's an organic variety. These guys are weeding the uh, crabgrass away from the garden. Um, they do an awesome job, but Seeds of Chains, Organic Cherry Tomatoes, they were absolutely prolific. I had two plants in pots out front last year, and I've gotten hundreds of plants. I've given a bunch away. I filled these two rows. We're getting little baby tomatoes. Hey, happy little sunflower. You can see in here a little better. All of the potato plants. They are, and they're, uh, some of them are red potatoes, which I love. I've been out here pruning these guys and getting them tied up down in here. One of the few things that I actually bought this year as plants, so to speak, they were actually slips, but these are sweet potato slips. Now, the cool thing about sweet potatoes, well, the bunnies love them. We love them. But the vines, the sweet potatoes grow in a vine. The tubers grow under the ground, but the vines spread everywhere. You can trim them, keep them trimmed so that they don't go crazy and feed them to the bunnies. They love it. I've already been clipping leaves off and they love it. Over here, I don't mind. I still I do have to weed this area. I haven't I haven't gotten my um, grass down for mulch. But Nick wanted to try wax gourds. So we have on either side of this trellis, we have wax gourds that we're gonna try and trellis up. And I told you about the fun volunteer sunflowers. This was a this was a grove that self-seeded and that's because we had rabbits running out here. Like we had them in, the, in their little crates and they went crazy. These, I we, we do feed the rabbits pumpkins in the fall. And I had the one that we never got to them and it rotted. And as a result, I have a ton of pumpkin plants. <laughs> but volunteers are the absolute best. They're the best, free food. These are Marasky purple peppers, which I have, um, I have one that I started last fall that I overwintered in the house that's already producing some cute little purple peppers for me. And then I have parsley here and here. That pot is awaiting whatever I'm going to transplant in there, which may be more purple peppers because I just think they're cool. This is, I don't know if you can see, can you see <laughs> that? That's a volunteer bean. It's a volunteer uh, string bean from last year. And they were good string beans. I just... I made the mistake last year of confusing string beans and pole beans, which is stupid. I grew up growing pole beans. I should absolutely know the difference between a pole bean and a string bean. But I got so excited to grow them that I put in string beans instead of pole beans. And then I was like depressed about it. Like it was, I was really sad. Like it was sad like I, that I screwed that up. Uh, so this is the strawberry patch. That is uh, a complete mess right now. It's a mess. It is a mess. I mulched really heavily with straw over here and you can tell like that area isn't too bad but holy cow I gotta get out here and weed and maybe I'll just let it go because I don't have to worry about it somebody else can worry about it next year but there's uh, our June bearing strawberries are down here they really didn't do a whole lot this year I know it's still June but whatever 
have some herbs planted here for the bunnies. It's strategically placed near one of the hutches um, so we can just grab some and give them to them as snacks. And here is sage that I started from seed, a volunteer marigold that I moved in there. The sunflowers are volunteers because I put some rabbit manure in here and obviously there was some seeds in there. I pulled a few. There was also tomato volunteers in here which was absolutely crazy. So down here, we had peas all on this trellis. There's still a few. Um, they're, they're finishing up because it's getting really hot. So I'm following the peas with cucumbers. I just did a second round of planting because some of them didn't come up. These are straight eight cucumbers, which is just what I had. I didn't want to buy a ton of seeds this year. All of the sunflowers back here, I didn't plant any of them. I didn't plant any of them. Not one. Neither the marigolds, nor... The cosmos that are back here that's all stuff that reseeded from last year and it's literally one of my favorite things about growing land flowers hi happy little bee enjoy your snack future ginger here turns out i'm a little long-winded with my garden tours so part two will be coming soon as soon as we can get it finished up with editing <laughs>